Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where I cover nostalgic, obscure, otherwise strange content today as I continue to look for things that were not made by something associated with the American Motion Picture and TV Alliance as we continue the strike, I find more and more random shit. We're going back to my roots of just finding the weirdest VHS tape nonsense that you can find and it's gonna be great. I'm so excited for today. I was scrolling through a channel that I love called The Random Archive and full disclaimer, Random Archive has been a amazing supporter of this channel and I've been wanting to cover stuff from their catalog for years now. But I found something called Secret Adventures Episode 1 I believe this is one of the things that they told me about on their channel because they find random, obscure, and somewhat lost media and upload it so that we have it for posterity. And honestly, channels like theirs are so, so vital to doing what I do here because without them, I wouldn't have access to the stuff that I want to talk about. I wouldn't even know about it to want to talk about it. This is a 90s Christian VHS direct show. As far as I'm aware, it is made independently and so does not count as struck media. To the best of my research and knowledge, uh, it is, however, produced by the media branch of the Southern Baptist Convention. So there's that. Hollywood, if this strike keeps going on, I swear to God, I will pull out all of the stops. We will cover all the obscure Christian media. I will cover Salty. Is that what you want? <laughs> I'm going to be real. I've never seen this show. I don't really know enough to even give you a premise. We're just going to watch it together because I saw one clip of it and I decided to come in here and record. It is six o'clock in the morning. I love when we get warnings to not redistribute videotapes on an uploaded videotape to YouTube. It's just like, well. Hey, Grandpa. Hi, Grandpa. Uh, Brewed it myself. Special uh, Grandpa flavored iced tea. <laughs> Did she say Grandpa flavored iced tea? See that? gives me the impression that it's flavored with grandpa's, which is a whole can of worms that I don't want to get into right now. You like it? Mmm. Honestly? Sure. <laughs> he does not like the tea. I call it panga sass. It's passion fruit, mango, and sassafras all mixed together. Oh, it's better this time. He had to get acclimated. He was just like, wait, give me a second, honey. Your great granddaddy always said, truth stands the test of time. Well, that feels like not at all what we were talking about, Grandpa. I thought we were talking about iced tea. His sermons were filled with talk about gardening. His sermons were filled with talk of gardening. So Grandpa had an HGTV show, <laughs> live and in concert, and also in a church. I'm not even going to bother touching the fact that that tea continuity is wrong. Oh, I love the theme song. We're going to run it back. most 90s thing I've heard in a while. I have no idea what the show is about still, but the song is super catchy. Okay, this episode is called Spin. Daddy, I'm up, I'm up. <sighs> she has a handkerchief? Why can't he wake me up like other fathers? Because I'm not like other fathers. Oh, Jesus. I'm a music professor. The dad's a tuba player? I love the dad. It's already 7.30. 7.30? Oh, good lord, not 7.30. The bathroom door has a little, like, window? That's strange. I've never seen that before. Rhea, hurry up. You're gonna be late for school. School. <laughs> it's day 4,851 in the secret adventures of Drea Thomas. Okay, 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 okay. Hang on. So she's got a watch that tells her what day of her life she's on. And boy, am I late. And she has a parrot? Well, enough for now. This is Drea Thomas saying... Goodbye to the past, and hello to the future. This show already feels like a show that I would have written when I was 12. Oh. Good morning, Mom. Is it? I don't think so. Our new ad campaign broke today, and... The mom's really upset about the ad campaign in the newspaper that they've run. What does that mean? That he likes 1950s TV shows? Are you watching Nick at Night again? Ooh, Nick at Night is kind of a no-go for Christian households, typically. I mean, I watched it, but I was a rebel child. Ow! Hey, careful! Ah. Oh my god. I'm a little sensitive from that stale English muffin yesterday. The toaster talks. Guys, guys, the toaster talks. I need, we need to get technology connections on this right now. The toaster is talking. That's Mr. Toaster to you, toots. He calls her toots. Aren't you meeting Kimberly at 745? 
Monster tells the time. What you do when some dummy puts a knife in your slot? <laughs> yeah! And then died? Can't you find a best friend that's an earthling? Ah, uh, yes. We only deal with normal people in this house. That house is gorgeous. I want to live in the house. Please excuse my brother. He just realized his lifelong dream of walking to school without stepping on a crack in the sidewalk. I had glasses almost exactly like that as a little kid. It was the 90s. Yeah, but nobody in their right mind's ever gonna run against Miss Popularity. What about you? <laughs> Very funny. Her friend wants her to run for school president and she's like, uh-uh. Here we go, have to close your eyes. Okay. Why does she have to close her eyes if you're just gonna cover her eyes with the hat? Open them up! Ta-da! Oh, Kimberly. What is all of this? I said I didn't want to run, I said no! What have you done? I see you've been your usual busy self. Oh, the mean, pretty popular girl. Every 90s kid show had one. I'm not gonna luck into this one like you did with that cheap babysitting stunt with Mrs. Long's kids. What? Hang on, I missed something. Them fun words. I have so many questions. There's only gonna be one embarrassed candidate on Friday, and it's not gonna take a pee brain to figure out who that is. <gasps> oh no, not the P word. <laughs> I'm getting the feeling that this episode is about truth. Oh god, her campaign is being sabotaged. This feels like Christianese for karma's a bitch. Wait, for a second it looked like the, the music was like the words that she was mouthing silently, but then it was singing, and I was just, I was tripping out for a second. Nobody cares about the issues. It's all about popularity. Seriously, where is this house? Who lives in this house? Can I can I buy this house? Um, the smoothie ingredients are dancing. Boy, if you can't paint like that, you'd be sure to win. Yeah, but only you kids can see my imagination. Okay, so only the kids can see her imagination, and the imagination is what's bringing everything to life, like the scary toaster. Okay. Has uh, anybody seen a stack of my composition sheets? I've lost a whole second movement. Uh-oh. The 90s zoom, the 90s sound effects. I've got news for you. Oh my god, I want her phone. The best friend has a pink, semi-see-through 90s phone. I want it, Perry. I know. Tomorrow's absolutely key to finding a way to really impact voters by making Drea seem like a total incompetent. Oh, goodness. And that will give them a fight they'll never forget. 90s four-way phone call. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, pots and pans, it's Drea Thomas. With the toaster giving her the pep talk, she can't fail. Excuse me, Drea. John Tesh here in Hollywood. Arlene Blake was assured of victory yesterday. What is different today? Well, two things, actually. Oh, the TV is the TV is grilling her. Aren't you fooling yourself by thinking this new approach will benefit the student body? Can you imagine if, if the TV actually worked like that? I think I would just die. Just die. So, what do you think, huh? Tempting free gift for the mom on the go? Her mom's a guest like Gatekeep Girl Boss. We love that. Lori, I still can't find my tuba sonata. Isn't the whole point of this episode to tell the truth? They're not telling the truth to the dad about where his sheet music went. Arlene supports animal testing. She's against any rainforest policy. Ooh, we're teaching kids about the dark and dirty side of politics early. And what about Drea Thomas? She breezes into school on an old bike. She's like, I know I've done some shady things, Your Honor, but in my defense... She's a poor. I'm really concerned about what's going on here. Oh, the principal's giving her the talk. The I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed talk. That's the worst kind of talk there is, Perry. We've located the sheet music. And we've hidden it again. Not the cliche light bulb. Rebecca's right. We need an adventure. You mean, like a secret adventure? Hey, that's the name of the show. Oh, no! Whoa! Yeah! Whoa! Oh my god. A shark with lipstick? Did she have lipstick on before she became a cartoon? Yes, that is the question that everybody's asking right now. <laughs> what a bunch of 
bunch of suckers. You guys really fell for that one. <laughs> Shark! <laughs> I just need a minute to process. Of course there wasn't a shark. You think a smart clownfish like me would be floating around if Jaws was on the loose? Oh, he's a clown. Okay, he's a clownfish. I see. <laughs> I also like how the girl, the, the little girl fish, still has her glasses. And, uh, hey, get a sense of humor, Puffy. I hate this guy. Not doing other clowns of any favors. Whoa! Real shark! <laughs> That's what you get. What do you think happened to the clownfish? Did the shark eat him? Or did he get another chance? I, I don't know, but... Uh, ob objection relevance? I can't wait to see how the clownfish hallucination helps with the main problem of the episode. The important thing is that... You decided to tell the truth. Oh, he popped a squad and gave the old 90s dad lecture. You know all the fictional parents that don't yell at you? Look, I want you to stop this... Now. Sounds like an order. I mean, it is her campaign. I want you to stop all of this or... I'll have to fire you. Oh, yeah, right. I, I dare you to fire your best friend. Who you're not paying. How do you fire somebody you're not paying? Okay, everybody, find a seat. Oh, my God, that's the dustiest gym I've ever seen. Looks like the building is actively burning down. Now, in my book, having dinner with my cousin, who happens to be on the Willowbridge soccer team, doesn't make me a traitor. Oh, not the enemy soccer team. This is simply a feeble attempt by someone who has no experience in student government or as president of any organization. The T, the Hampton Falls T. I'm invested now. I can't thank you for that welcome, but I do deserve it. That's queen behavior, owning your mistakes. I'm in Mrs. Roth's US history class and she's making us learn every known fact about George Washington. But what stands out most to me is GW's complete and utter devotion to doing what is right and honest. I've decided to remove my name from the ballot. <gasps> Everybody's like, we got dressed up, we came out here just for her to resign. Now there's no debate. The election committee has declared a winner and the votes have been counted. Arlene Blake, 93. George Washington, 187. <laughs> so George Washington got more votes, but the mean girl still gets to be class president. But she's still technically lost, so she storms off. <laughs> and everybody's like, well, guess I'm out of here. Well, at least you lost her most popular president. Be quiet, Marcy. I feel like a time-honored tradition of America is that no president is truly popular. But uh, uh You were honest and... And you still beat Arlene. Wait, I'm confused. Who's class president? Still friends? I don't know. My dad would be pretty happy if I outgrew you. <laughs> Are we still friends, bestie? Well, my dad hates you, but sure. It's a great thing you did today, Adrian. That kind of honesty is very rare these days. Aw, that's wholesome. I know I'm snarky, but I genuinely am glad that the Random Archive has archived this. This was a very fun watch. An interesting story coming out of Hampton Falls, New Jersey this morning. It appears that George Washington was elected president of the seventh grade class. <gasps> but after hearing the news, former president and New Jersey resident Woodrow Wilson has thrown his hat into the ring for mayor in November's election. <laughs> that wasn't as Christian-y as I was afraid it was going to be. I do wish it wasn't produced by the Southern Baptist Convention, but, you know... That's it for this video. I'd like to genuinely thank the Random Archive, not just for archiving this so that I have it to talk about, but just for supporting the channel and being really cool. We appreciate them over there. Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing. Everything you do to support this channel means the world to me. If you're new here and you're a fan of nonsense, maybe consider sticking around because I post nonsense all the time. And remember, my name is Avery. I'm a YouTuber if you say so, because thanks to you guys, this is technically a YouTube channel. Bye.